Hey, what's going on guys? Um, this is a quick intro before we get straight into the four um, Let's Not Meet stories. So these were found on Reddit, subreddit, Let's Not Meet. I will try and leave a link to each um, individual post in the description of the video. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to doing more videos like this. I'll probably do a video every two days. It's kind of my schedule because I don't want to make a video every day because I just don't want to pressure out videos and just... Um, make videos I don't want to make and I want to take time to make my videos like these videos are pretty good and I I do definitely enjoy them um, If I see this kind of series go well on my channel my channel might turn into um, a Storytelling channel because you know, I do like making story videos. Yeah, I'm not sure what you guys would think of that or you know, maybe it won't happen, but this is just um, another t another four story I, t I thought I'd tell you guys. Uh, actually, my last one was three stories, but this one's four now. Um, so if you enjoy these four stories, please leave a like on the video. And without any further ado, let's get straight into them. Thank you so much for watching. Number one. Just the other night, my friend and I were out in LA. We parked the car in a public parking lot and then proceeded with the rest of our night. Later that night, around 11 p.m., we returned briefly to the parking lot by this time this place was pretty empty there were only several cars spread around throughout the lot as it costs more for an overnight stay as we were walking out to the exit again we noticed this one silver whitish car we believe it to be a volkswagen jetta in the center of the lot i had seen it earlier when we first arrived around 7 pm but the lot was packed then so i didn't pay much attention to it for reference, the car was probably a little bit more than 100 feet away from ours. The front of the car was covered in white paper signs taped all over. They all read along the lines of, someone is watching you, in black marker. At first, I chuckled to myself, thinking just how odd that was. My eyes shifted up to the front of the window. There we saw a figure of a woman, sitting in the car, hidden under the shadows. As we looked at her head, her face turned up towards me. I just looked for a second. Her face was pale, smooth like she was wearing a mask. Her eyes were pitch black. She tilted her head at us and started and stared at us. My friend and I quickly turned back forward again. We laughed at it and scurried out to the exit, joking that I was probably just some crazy lady. Needless to say, we were curious but also hoping that we wouldn't encounter her again. An hour or two later, it was time to go home, so we went back to the parking lot. But by this time, it was pretty much closed. The night shift guard waited outside the lot and said hi as we walked back in, entered the lot. There are even less cars now, but sure enough, the woman and her car were still in the same spot. This was around 1.20am now, so presumably the woman had been just sitting there in her seat who knows for how long, but at the least when we arrived around 7pm. Her head was down, so we just quietly walked out to her car to go in and started it. Our night was over. We were tired and we just wanted to get home. As my friend backed the car up, we looked out the windows and the woman was getting out of her car. Freaking out, I rushed my friend to hurry up. We straightened up into the lane and the woman started walking toward our car. We got a better look at her this time. It wasn't a mask. Her face was painted white like, like a Jisa, but... Those eyes were still the same pitch black. She slowly approached her car step by step. My friend stepped on the pedal and drove out. The guard outside looked at us and asked, You okay son? Eager to leave, my friend nodded and we left, but that was that. I don't know what happened, but hopefully we won't run into her again. Hopefully she was just a crazy lady or a method actor preparing for a role. Or we were on some prank video. I wonder if anyone else in LA has seen this lady parking lot in Westwood. Number two. So this happened a long time ago, like five years ago, and I never really had anyone to tell it to. I was about 14 years old, so I was still in my carefree exploration stage of life. Oftentimes me and my buddies would get on our bikes and just go somewhere we hadn't really been before, just to see what was there. One of our favorite places to visit was an old barn just off the main road. It was a short bicycle ride from my house and the farmer had moved away a long time ago so me and my buddy would often go there just to jump in the haystack and try to scare each other. Naturally I said yes so we started off and soon enough we were on the top of a hill overlooking the barn at the base of a depression of land. 
We slowly started down the hill. Once we were about halfway down, we both heard a loud shooting and what sounded like glass breaking. Suddenly, around 2018 year olds, best guess, all on bicycles appeared on the opposite hill just staring us down. Then from what I could guess was their leader, pointed right at us without saying a word and they all started coming right at us. I know this doesn't sound scary at this point but if you see 20 really big guys barreling down a hill towards you, breakneck speed shouting we are going to get you and you can't get away, you would basically be terrified. So naturally me and my friend turn around and pedal as hard as we could like our lives depended on it. I was in front of her and the heat of the moment I turned left on the main road towards the park instead of right towards her house. I was able to quickly stash my bike in a dense amount of trees and lay down totally motionless. Roughly 20 seconds later, they all came barreling down the catwalk, literally 4 feet from where I was hiding. Thankfully they all thought I had headed to the park and didn't think I could have hid that quickly. I waited for what felt like an hour but it was probably around 5 minutes and I stood up and got on my bike and went home as quickly as I could. That will be it for me, most terrifying encounter I've ever had. So. Scary biker guys, let's not meet. Number 3 I lived a portion of my childhood in a little hobby farm in rural Canada. It was great because we had neighbours near enough that we could ride our bikes to their place and still have a great deal of privacy. For the most part, all of our neighbours were great people except for this dude that lived down the hill from us and a kid who lived a couple of kilometres away. This kid was weird. I was quite young when he came to visit but I have two memories of strange things he did. I was between 4 and 6 and my oldest sister was between 8 and 9 around the time of these events. This kid was probably around 10 or 11. I can't certainly remember the actual chronological order of these events but they happened within the same summer for sure. I have very vague memories of these events but I have a clear idea of what happened. The kid lived south west of US on a small plot of land that was basically just a yard and a dumpy mobile home. He had told us that he lived there with just his mother and she was never home because she worked a lot. This led to him doing literally whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted. And I remember him showing up to our yard randomly in a couple of months that he had lived there. One of these days he showed up with a large rusty knife. I remember it was like a big hunting knife with a large handle and a long blade. My sister and I asked where he got it because it was so big and we were always told not to play with sharp objects. He told us that he got stuck in his bike tyre a ways down the road to the north. I remember thinking that this was odd because he lives in the south of US and yet he was riding his bike all the way up the north. Yet he was riding his bike all the way up past our property. I pretty much chalked it up to the fact that his mom was never around so he could do whatever he wanted. One of my sisters brought up the fact that the knife was huge and dull but it was still strange that he hadn't gotten caught in this small bike tyre. We had sheep on our farm and they are all almost female for two rams. One was huge, brown and responsible for impregnating our female sheep. This ram, we named him Rami, was so big that we were able to ride him around the pen and he could roam with us on his back. We are small for little girls, mind you, but he was tough as hell. On the day that the kid showed up with a knife, we were standing in a small cluster of trees next to the sheep pen, probably so my dad wouldn't see the kid's knife. Rami was inside the pen and I have a vivid image in my brain of him looking over at us while we talked. The kid started talking about who was going to throw the knife at Ram and climb over the fence to stab him. I've always been a lover of all animals and we had ridden and pet the ram on many occasions before then so I felt like this kid wanted to attack my pet. This may seem like a stupid kid boasting but the second event is also pretty fucked up. It was another day on which the kid showed up to our yard. This time we were standing at the end of our long driveway and he had come from the north on his bike which didn't have a pop tyre and, and I'm almost positive that this event happened after the first and was carrying something in one of his hands. When he showed it to my sisters and me, I immediately knew that the situation was screwed up. It was a baby bird, its feathers ruffled and it looked hurt and sick. 
he was telling us about how he would feed it and stuff, but then he took his hands and shoved his fingers down its throat. I remember telling him not to do that because the bird looked panicked and afraid. When he did that, he just did it again and again. Eventually, he left, but I still think about it from time to time. The kids stopped showing up eventually and my dad said that he moved. I always think about how people say that killers usually start with animals and the way the kid treated animals was not right. So yeah, kid who talked about killing and abusing animals, let's not meet. Number 4 Okay, so my life is extremely interesting. Not only does weird shit happen, but some freaky shit happens. No, my age is 15 in this time. I started sneaking out with my friends when I was 30 and I felt as if I was growing up when I did so. I felt a rush of adrenaline. It was almost addictive. It was around 2am when we snuck out where typical time was around 12am but her mother was taking a while to fall asleep. Anyway, after she did I ran over to her house as she was sneaking out of her window. She gave me her backpack and I got it. Typical shit, food and a blanket in case we get cold. We had a list of places to go and check out. I will list them. Bleachers, baseball field, check school, check town, check neighbours, check train tracks, check creepy ass fucking road, not done. Okay, so you're probably wondering what's that creepy ass road. Well, it's this road with a very dim light every 20 yards. Rural and creepy. What a perfect way to end the night. So after we did most of the usual shit, hiding in ditches from cars, doing our best not to get caught, per as usual, it worked. So, it was time... Now around 4am, we're heading to the creepy ass road. As we turned the corner to begin walking, we were having a very long conversation about creepy shit that often happened here. Now I'm a typical athletic female that really only scared of myself. Well, at this time, I wasn't scared of anything, but yeah, I was somewhat fearless of where I was. There was a chunk of land in an abandoned house about 5 acres from the entry of the property, and it was only this road. Me being the idiot and being on a high of adrenaline suggested we go there. It took her a while to agree, but I'm not gonna lie, I was a tiny bit unnerved. We began making our way down to the house. It was oddly quiet and really strange, and as we were finally getting to the house, Ali, the girl with me, said very anxiously, Let's not. Why not? We did not walk all this way for nothing, I said. Fine, but get yourself killed, she mumbled. I continued walking nervously towards the house while she watched. I tried my hardest to seem confident of what I was doing, but although I was quite clueless to what would come, I got to the door and heard a light creak on the inside. Once again, my heart was pumping, I wasn't really thinking too right. I just barged in and started snooping around, nothing really much. As I was walking out, Ali screamed and I looked behind me to see a man standing behind me. I couldn't move, I was speechless. I couldn't believe that was true. He crouched down to my height, I was 5'8 and he was 6'4 and said don't snoop around my house. He then said my full name and alias. My eyes widened and then he continued on, I have been watching you all, don't you have the mind to shut your blinds girl? I was pissed and scared at the same time. I stomped his foot and then kicked him in the balls, then proceeding to kick him to the ground. I began running towards Ali, pulling her along as I passed by her. The man was getting up, grunting while trying to run after us. I never ran so hard in my life. My chest was burning when I stopped running. I was very careful after this all happened. It would be two years before I snuck out again and got a full explanation. I snuck out. I'm now 17 and went over to get Ali, Shelby and my boyfriend Eric. We went out to a new hangout where we drink beers and just smoke cigarettes. I asked, hey Ali, remember that creepy dude at that farm? Ali looked at me nervously. Yes, that man was my mom's brother. He was obsessed with her child and my friends thinking that he deserved them more, she said. She went on about this mental health issue. About a year ago he killed himself and the only reason they found out was due to the fact that the realtor was going to fix up the house and found his body. He stalked us since we were eight apparently and we had no clue. The only way she knew was because her mother would often at night see her brother sneaking around her house. She did not do anything because she feared him. I am now 25 and I've moved far from that town and I have stayed in touch with Ali and her family. They're fine but Ali has acute paranoia due to finding out about all of this and has become very OCD about remaining safe. She moved about 200 miles away from Washington DC last I heard. 
and for me, well, I'm fine. I have nothing much that worries me. I'm, I'm just living in Florida with my boyfriend, but whenever I go back there for a holiday or something, I still get creeped out about being there. So, creepy stalking uncle that was mentally disabled, I am very glad we will never meet again.